Welcome to Rivalries. On Sunday, Aston Villa play Manchester United at Old Trafford. Today, I'm joined by a long-time friend of mine, Ian Barber. He's a Manchester United season ticket holder. Ian, welcome back to All Villa, No Filler. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, no, any time the Villa play United, I want to get your thoughts on it because, look, Villa have not had the best of time against Manchester United since the day I was born all the way back in 1986. Um, is there a team that you prefer playing than Aston Villa? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, it's in history, yeah, we've got a lot of points off Villa. It's been a very happy hunting ground for us. However, I'm not very confident about playing this current Aston Villa team. I think I saw a stat earlier that it was 26 points out of the last 30, which is an incredible position to be in. I mean, it shows you what a bad job Stephen Gerrard was doing. I don't know how you all feel about him, but oh. I mean, from where you were at the start of the season to where you are now, it's a massive change around. But yeah, in the past, yeah, we'd love playing Villa. Although I was there when you beat us 1-0 at home, I think. Gabby upon the whole scored, was it? Yeah, mm. that was disappointing. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's always like pretty much a guaranteed three points. Although, you know, you did beat us at Villa Park earlier this year where we were absolutely terrible. So, who knows? Mm, I, th I think this is definitely the best... Our Villa team in the Premier League that I've seen for, I mean, God, as long as I can remember, really. So it definitely adds a, uh, an interesting sort of wrinkle to the old Trafford visit because it's never a place I particularly feel any positivity visiting. But I am wondering this weekend whether we might just have something, some momentum. Um, but, uh, you know, how how do you feel going into this game? Well, I think you've got to be confident because of our home form this season. I mean, it has become Fortress Old Trafford again, hasn't it? I think we haven't lost there since um, Sociedad when the, when the Queen died. <laughs> Although, I'm not blaming that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the players on the pitch weren't that bothered. Um, but yeah, I mean, our home form has been incredible. I mean, so that makes me pretty confident. However, as I say, Villa are in good form. I don't think there's probably any team in better form in the league than Villa, maybe mm. apart from the top, top two. So it's going to be a really tough game, but I think we are quite good at bouncing back and we had an absolute horror show in Seville last week. And then we were OK on Sunday against Brighton. I mean, we've got lots of injuries. Quick turnaround. It's been Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. I've never known so many games in a season. It just feels like we're at Old Trafford every week. So it's going to be tough. But I think because we've bounced back well in the past, I think we've probably got another win in us on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned those injuries. What what players uh, are currently struggling for United with, with injuries? Well, we lost our two best centre-backs. So we lost Varane and Martinez. Martinez has been an absolute revelation this year. I remember when I last came on, we were talking about Rafa and Varane and how good he was compared to what we had. And he is. He's brilliant. Mm. But Martinez is just up another level again. He's just been unbelievable. Uh, but obviously, he snapped his uh, metatarsal um, against Seville in the home leg, which has obviously got him because he's become a fan favourite. Uh, crowd loves him. He's so dependable. The mistake Harry Maguire made to set Seville away when um, he was under pressure and he just gave the ball to their uh, attacker. Martinez just turns out of that. He just step over the ball, turns out of defence. I mean, there's clips of it on Twitter going around that, you know, that he can do that so easily. So that's a massive, massive miss. And then we've got Bruno Fernandes, who was pictured this week with his foot in a protected boot, which is a worry because he's been our best player for the last couple of games. Eriksson's not quite back to full fitness, I think. Obviously, you know, he's he's of a decent age now. He was quite a serious injury. And I think we've probably rushed him back. And I think we've probably rushed Michael Rashford back as well because when you fired on three fronts, as we still were, you want everyone playing. You want your best chance of going through. And I think in an ideal world, those players wouldn't have come back yet. But here we are. Um, Rashford certainly didn't look fully fit on Sunday. Mm. I mean, Harry Maguire as well. He certainly seems to... I mean, other than the fact that he has the best surname in the world... Um, it, it's his only redeeming feature. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I was going to say, like, what? What's the general consensus on Maguire? Do you think he, as he comes to the end of the road at United, do you think is it probably time for him to move on this summer? Yeah, I think he's just mentally shot, isn't he? I mean, I think we can all see it, whether you're United fan or not, when you watch him play. He just, he just doesn't look confident. He's not been the same player since he got banged up in Greece. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Um, but... Oh no, there's two. I think there's two sections of United fans. You've got the online fans who just hate him. They're just right. looking for him to fail all the time. Even if a mistake's not entirely his fault, they're on him straight away. 
And then you've got the match going fans who have really tried their best to back him um, vocally, you know, and obviously online as well. Um, but I think even those Reds are getting to the end of their tether now. I know I am. I just think, how long can it go on for? There has to be consequences. Like the consequences this season is that he's not been starting, obviously, he is now because of injuries. Mm. But he's lost his place in the team and he's supposed to be United's captain. You know, we bought him for £80 million. Pounds. That's not an £80 million pound player to me. He's, he's not quick. Passing is erratic. He gets caught out so often. I think, and I think he's just mentally not there. I think other teams look at him and think, yeah, go at him. He'll struggle. For the first 10 minutes um, recently, I can't remember which game it was now, top head, but like, my God, he made like five serious mistakes in mm-hmm. 10 minutes. That yeah. isn't good enough for United. And it just puts the whole team under pressure. It makes everyone nervous. De Gea, it clearly makes him nervous when he's got him in front of him. And then you look how good Lindelof was on Sunday when he wasn't playing next to him. They got this nickname, the Chuckle Brothers, but it's not really fair on Lindelof. There's only one Chuckle Brother, and it's Harry Maguire. Right. Wow. So it's yeah, I I I wouldn't at all be surprised if he goes this summer. But you know, I, I look at United's squad, and there's a few other players I do wonder, like you know, like Anthony Martial, for instance, somebody I feel like has been there now forever and doesn't seem to have kicked on mm. in the way you would have hoped. Like, do you think yeah. this summer Ten Hag might have a bit of a clear out? I think he'd love to have a clear out. I think every manager since Fergie's wanted to have a clear out, but we just tie ourselves in knots with wages. Can't get rid of players. We just loan them out and then they come back again and we loan them out again. We've got so much dead wood in the squad. Martial, he's a great player on his day. We saw it a couple of times, didn't we, this this year when he came into the side recently um, after Begos. <laughs> That's another disaster. Uh, in fact, I really like Begos, I must say that. But yeah, he's not a great footballer, is he? Um, but Marshall just turns it on on a nice day, you know. You know, if he fancies it, yeah, he's great. But against Seville last week, he's like, "Oh, I'm injured, right? Okay, I yeah, you just don't fancy it then." He's just he's the most fair weather football that I've ever seen. And right. if I was a if I was a Villa fan, for example, I'd take a look at him and think, "Ah, oh, it's not the sort of person we want here." Yeah, no way. And I think going back to Maguire, I don't I I don't think I would have him if I was you. I don't see what improvement he would be for you. I mean, that's how that's how low his stock has fallen. You know, you, you look ahead to this Sunday. Um, you know, you mentioned that United have quite a few injuries. Villa as well. I think yesterday against Fulham, we won one nil. The second mm-hmm. half looked maybe slightly fatigued. Yeah, you grounded um, out it yesterday. I think it was a bit of a gr- yeah ground out, and, and maybe maybe the message was Fulham are not doing anything here, and they didn't have a I think they had one shot all game, none on target. Um, so maybe they were just let's conserve energy ahead of the big mm-hmm. United game. And you are playing on Thursday. This is recorded before your game against Spurs. So maybe that could be of an advantage. But at the same time, Villa, they are looking a bit thin now. Um, mm. Quite a few injuries. Coutinho, Leon Bailey, Matty Cash, Bubakar Kamara, two big injuries there. So um, I do wonder if that might just, we might just have pushed that too far when we go to Old Trafford, especially considering your your home form. Mm. But uh, is there any, is there any, Anybody at Villa or anything about Villa that kind of makes you worry a little bit this Sunday? You've got to say the form that Ollie Watkins has been in. It's typical the one year I didn't put him in my fantasy team. He's uh, <laughs> banging him in every week. Yeah. Um, so he's obviously a great player. I think um, the pace you've got up front as well is pretty special. Um, my fear, I've already talked about Harry Maguire, but we haven't got the quickest defence in the world. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, I think... Like you say, I think every team's getting light, aren't they? It's the longest season ever because of the World Cup. It feels like this season's just gone on forever, and it probably mm-hmm. feels like that to the players. You know, we're seeing more and more injuries. Like we we, we were thinking before the um, after sorry after the Seville game, that's it, season done. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got, just got too many injuries. Too many people are obviously knackered. Too many people like Marshall are folding it in. We're just we're going to run out here, um, and I think Villa might be in the same place. Like it's a big ask to win twenty six points out of thirty. Yeah. I mean, it's going to have to stop at some point. Um, whether it happens on Sunday, I don't know. I mean, I've already said I fancy United to win, but it wouldn't surprise me if, it, if we see a bit of a draw. <laughs> Both teams just look knackered. Yeah. Absolutely knackered. And is there, I mean, yeah, you, you mentioned that lack of pace and defence. I mean, do, do United tend to play a high line at home? Uh, and are you quite high pressing? Is that the sort of team you are? I think it depends who's playing. Right. Um, obviously, we have a lot of the ball. Um in the past, under previous managers, we got caught out all the time. 
Um, the midfield was always an issue. You could pass straight through the midfield where we had like the likes of Fred and McTominay and Pogba. Whereas that's improved now. We've got Casemiro sitting. So we're actually, we're able to just sit there, keep the ball. And if if you break on us, we usually get we usually get players back quite quickly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I just, I'm just gutted that we've lost minus, to be honest. I'm just, I was almost in tears when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Absolutely odd. love him. That's an odd feel really as well. Him. Uh, and that's how I'd feel about Emmy Martinez, to be honest. I'd uh, yeah. I'm serious tears about that. Um, you know, uh, but Eric Ten Hag <clears> himself, you know, like I've been going on and on and on and on about how much I love Professor Unai Emery, call him the professor. Oh, yeah. uh, he's just done an absolutely fantastic job at Villa uh, compared to what Steven Gerrard was doing, which, to be honest, got toxic. Um, his uh, it, it, the, the team looked clueless on the pitch. His comments off the pitch were weird, whereas you look at Unai Emery and everything he's done so far, it just seems to have nailed it, really. Um, and every player has, has, has basically gone up a level. Like, or they all mm. look like players reborn, except mm. maybe one or two. But, um, you know, when I say all that about uh, Unai Emery, but what about Eric Ten Hag? I mean, he started badly. It was a worrying start, but God almighty, so impressive how he's turned it around from that shaky mm. start. I mean, what, what do you make of him? Absolutely love him. I think he's just everything we needed. You know, he's uh, he's an authoritarian, but at the same time, he's not sort of, I don't know, a Jose Mourinho screaming at everyone type figure. He's just he's just united the club, really. I mean, the way he's handled all these big decisions has been good. The way he handled Ronaldo was fantastic. You know, being served that shit sandwich, excuse my French, you know, Ronaldo running off to Piers Morgan to do interviews, like oh. completely undermining the manager in the entire club. And he just dealt with it perfectly. And look at look how we've been since Ronaldo left. It's just he's just a breath of fresh air. And my only fear is that we don't back him with what he needs because you know he's worked wonders with the squad that was there. And yeah, there's some great players. And with some of the signings he's made have been brilliant. Mm. But he's going to need more. I think the last few months have shown you that he's going to need more if we really want to compete with City and and now Arsenal. Um, but yeah, he's he's amazing. We all love him. Um, I don't know if you've seen the alternative of UFC on Twitter, but bold is best. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, he's no, he's done a, done a very impressive job, and he seems mm. to have a bit of a presence about him that I think you've had big name mm. managers since Alex Ferguson left, but there's something a bit more. Maybe he just feels like the right man at the right time. Mm. Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's made the transition from Dutch football as well. A lot of people said, "Oh, you know, you can't go from Holland to." straight into the Premier League and have success. And I imagine that after the first two games, everyone was like, oh, look at him. He can't do it. He's rubbish. He's a Frank Dubois. But, I mean, he's just been... His football's great. When we're on, we're on a good day. We're, we're hard to beat. Yeah. Like, good football, score exciting goals. However, when we have a bad day, we have a really, really bad day. I mean, <laughs> 7-0 against Liverpool. Yeah. It was the low point. But then again, the, the performance at Newcastle was equally bad when we lost 2-0 and then... As I've mentioned previously, what happened in Seville. So we've had really bad days, but they are they do feel few and far between. And I think look at what he's done at Old Trafford. It's just the home form has been insanely good. He's mm-hmm. just got to work on beating the bigger teams away. But that's been a big problem for him. And just going back to you know Emery, what what a what a manager. I mean, yeah. I, I think he didn't get a fair crack of the rip at Arsenal. I think he had a tough shot going straight in off the back of Wenger. I think people took the mick out of him unnecessarily. And then you look at his record in Spain. I mean, he's had our number a few times in the Europa League. And, you know, if you do finish in the top six, who's used to say that you aren't going to go on and win the Europa League next year because you've got the right man for the job, haven't you? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, we've got the right man for the job and you got, we've got a very good squad um, that I think this summer our board are very ambitious. I do think that he'll get backing. I don't think Villa will go to like the 40 million, 50 million mark. I think that's really what we're going to do. But we signed Alex Moreno, a left back. The, the only signing Uno Emery himself has made, Yonderan was not a, an Emery signing, but uh, Alex Moreno, our left back, um, 13, 40 million from uh, Real Betis. And on the left hand side of the pitch of Villa, his progressive play has been absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And on the left hand side, Villa looks such a threat. And there's so many good triangles being worked down there. Tyron Mings is. Looked fantastic, you know. Um, Jacob Ramsey works nicely with Moreno. Ollie Watkins works nicely with him. So it's um, and Douglas Luiz as well. I mean, all the everybody, everybody's doing yeah, well. Yeah, I just, I just think you bought well, haven't you? Yeah. For the most part, in the last few years, you bought well. 
it's uh yeah so it's um it's just a yeah phenomenal to have seen it really and i think as you say it's it's really not because he, he comes across just as somebody who has such a passion for the game and that translates to the villa fans and we've been starved really of a manager who has had that aura maybe ever um yeah yeah i mean i say well, ever, in, well in our lifetime potentially I think, that's you know, it yeah back, i mean yeah yeah. So, you know, Ron Saunders had that aura, but that's before my time, really. Um, but he's, you know, I, I always compared Villa to like a Liverpool and Manchester United and thought, if you look at where those clubs were in the early 80s, there's not really a reason that Villa couldn't have been one of the teams that took off. But it was just that I think for United, obviously, United Liverpool has incredible history. But you also got that manager, just that yeah. the manager who had that aura. And Liverpool eventually got that as well more recently in Jurgen Klopp. Mm. So I think Villa have been waiting to find that person. And we all loved Dean Smith, but he was the right man at the right time, maybe in the Championship and to keep us in the Premier League. And yeah. to get that, to start challenging at the top of the Premier League, Unai Emery just has that, um, you know, four Europa League trophies, a Champions League semi-final recently, managed, you know, similar level clubs to Villa in Spain to really high mm. positions in La Liga. So, it's really hard to not feel such, you know, positivity yeah. about him. Really, I think um, I'm going to go and put some money on Aston Villa Europa Champions for next year. <laughs> Dark I wonder what the odds are. I bet the, I bet the odds are even that high. You know. Yeah. Well, look, Rangers got to a final last year. Mm-hmm. West Ham semi final. I mean, why can't Villa do yeah. something similar? Really? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, uh, with United as well, you know. Playing at Old Trafford, um, how how do you sort of hurt teams generally? What what's the way you, you do it? Like where, where's um, where do you exploit teams? Do you think? You, I would say at the moment it's usually down the flank, so it's either Anthony or Rashford cutting inside. I mean, I don't know how much you've seen of Anthony, but he can only cut inside. <laughs> He's got no, got no right foot at all, which yeah. is baffling because. You know, we paid 80 million for him and he starts every week for United. I don't like him. I think he's a good player. I think he makes us a better team, but he's got no right foot. So um, I think we tend to like spread the ball wide, overload on one side, then whip it in. Problem is, why we haven't scored enough goals is we haven't got a number nine. We haven't got someone who's knocking them in in the middle. So mm. we tend to, it tends to be that, like I say, Anthony cuts in, tries to curl it in with his left foot, or Rashford cuts in and does from something similar with his right foot. We don't tend to like try and run in behind teams as we did under Solskjaer as much because we're getting way more of the ball and we're moving the ball back because we've got Casemiro, we've got Eriksen, we've got Fernandez. I mean, some of the passing from those three, specifically Fernandez recently, has been unbelievable. Right. Uh, long range passes get teams on their toes. And I think, you know, we do tire people out when we play them. I mean, I don't know if that'll be the case with Villa or not. Um, but I think um, it all sort of stems from, as I said to you before, two strong centre backs. Casemiro sat in front of them, giving them protection, because that's something we've never had over the past few years, because neither Fred or McTominay can do that. Right. And then that gives licence to the likes of Bruno and Eriksen, if they're going to play together, to move forward, to get in behind the lines. Bruno overlaps while Rashford or Anthony holds it up and plays it in. And then the fullbacks as well, like Luke Shaw, he's been great. Mm. He's, been, he's been injured recently, so I think you can tell that a little bit. Um, but Wanda Saka as well, I mean, I was writing him off. I thought he'd never play for United again. And then on Sunday, he was like skipping past people like they weren't there. You can't so I think get he's past done... him as well. No, uh, no. Don't let him get past him. And then Delot's actually improved as well. So I think he's done great work with the full-backs. Um, I just think for the Ten Hag master plan, which is, which is lacking Harry Kane or, or a Harry Kane type figure. Yeah. And that'll be the priority in the, in the season. Maybe a goalkeeper as well, because I think De Gea might have just... Just overstayed his welcome. I just think he's not a modern enough keeper to do what Ten Hag wants him. I mean, the amount of times yeah. we pass it out from the back and put ourselves into trouble, it just kills me. But, you know, I I like the ambition. I just don't think you've got a goalkeeper to do it at the moment. Well, you leave Emmy Martinez alone. You don't need oh, an that. Argentinian Martinez. I'm not interested in him. <laughs> 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 he, wound, he, he wound me up too much in the World Cup. Oh, yeah. And when he danced in front of the strip, but then not a couple of years ago. So uh, he's, not, he's one of them. And if he's yours, she's actually love him. But everyone else. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like uh, everyone hates Bruno for us. But yeah. yeah. That which which is such an unvilla thing. Like we just haven't had play. I mean, Grealish, I suppose, but we haven't had players like that very often. Um, yeah. So you need him. You need him. Oh. You need to wind people up. 
that winning mentality just and yeah. being willing to do some of the dark arts uh, 100% yeah. you need that it's like when we had under Herrera's spot on the city budget uh yes he had you were all frothing about it it's like <laughs> don't put your badge on the floor then <laughs> gonna get spat on <laughs> Right. Uh, so, yeah, you, you mentioned in Rashford there. That does worry me slightly because, you know, you got Matt, Matty Cash, he's got this ankle injury picked up and he, so he's been out for a while now. Uh, mm. And so he'd likely be Ashley Young making a return oh, to right. Manchester. Mm. Um, Rashford versus Young. Young's evergreen and been fantastic for us again. Um, but you do wonder, like... A lot yeah. to ask. I think uh, if you were facing Rashford three months ago, you'd have a serious problem. I do think that he's tired, he's he's been injured, and he's been rushed back, as I said before. So I think that uh, it will be closer than it would have been previously. But okay. you would think that Rashford will win that battle more times than he will. Yeah, you'd think. Um, well, look, uh, you know, I'll get, we'll get to a score prediction in a minute. But, uh, you know, first, I do want to ask you, you know, um, it's interesting as a football fan, really. You know, Manchester United, um, you're always an interesting club to observe. As a, you know, you want you're maybe the biggest in the world, arguably. Um, it's a soap opera, that's what you mean. It's a, it's a bit of a soap <laughs> opera, yeah. Um, there's, always a, there's always a United story every day, isn't there? Well, yeah. So I, I'm interested to know, um, you know, the takeover bit that has been going in from various different places. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, God. Well, if anyone has listened to me on this podcast before, they'll know how much I hate the Glazers. That's straight out of the gate. I hate yeah. the Glazers. They've been an absolute disease on the club. They've taken so much money out. They've put none of their own money in. All these stupid people who can't see the fact that, yes, we spent money, but it's been the money that we've generated. It's not been money put in by them, and it's been spent badly in a lot of the places. Look how many bad players we bought. Look at the state of Old Trafford. You know, people are sat there and having the roof leaking on them. People are going into toilets and just piss around their ankles. It's mm. it's not a it's not a modern stadium. And look, it's been overlooked for the the twenty twenty eight bid, hasn't it, for the uh, European Championships? So I think they've um, they've let the club fall into a state of disrepair. They've made a few decent appointments internally over the last couple of years, which has actually helped kind of make it look like the ship is just about floating. Um, but when it comes to the bids, I'm just not convinced they're going to start. I just, I don't know. I think they are searching for the minority investment that one of these American hedge, hedge funds are going to give them. So they can remain in power with hardly any um, any shares themselves, but mm. massive voting rights because their shares are worth 10 times everybody else's. Um, and also the fact that, you know, look who the bidders are. There's no perfect billionaire, is there? As much as I would love there to be a knight in shining armour who's just perfect and pure it isn't isn't mm -hmm. gonna happen um and also fan ownership isn't gonna happen you know we're not just gonna find someone who's gonna say okay i'm gonna buy this club and i'm gonna give you 51 percent. it's just it's just not gonna happen is it so i look at the two two offers i'm really don't want us to be bought by Qatar because let's be honest it is a nation state bid despite what they say i mean how yeah. oh, naive must you be to think it isn't and then i look at jim ratcliffe who you know has made his money in chemicals and fracking you know, there's a lot of Saudi money in that bid. So again, it's not perfect. He says he's a United fan. And yeah, I think he was when he when he grew up, but then he moved to uh, Monaco, doesn't pay any taxes, and he's had a Chelsea season ticket holder. So how much of a United fan is he really? Right. So there's neither, neither bid's perfect. Obviously, out of the two, I'd prefer Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid. Um, but I'm just not convinced they're going to sell. And it's a hard one because you're in a position where you think, okay, I've protested against these owners for... What is it now? So 15 years, over 15 years. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, okay, well, if I protest further, does that mean I'm just taking one step closer towards being owned by Qatar? Mm. I mean, there's a protest before the Villa game that the 1958 group have, have set up, and that is a march from Manchester City Centre to the ground, which has got quite a lot of publicity, and I imagine it will be quite high profile. I don't think it'll get to the stages of the Liverpool game where it got called off, but I think it'll be quite visual. But you think, well, if I'm going to take part in that protest, does that mean I want Qatar? Because that's, be honest, that's probably the most likely bid because the Glazers are going to accept the highest offer. They're not going to go, oh, do you know what? I've heard you Barber fancies that bid that's not as much money. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's just not going to happen, is it? Because the business yeah. bid, the, the Sharks, it's what they are. So you've got to accept that. So I'm now thinking, do I take part in that protest? Because I think, you know what? I don't know. I'm a hypocrite because I watch the World Cup. I'm sure you watch the World Cup as well. So, yeah. you know, we've all asked questions about Qatar and their human rights record. Um, 
we all watch the World Cup. So, I mean, maybe I am just a massive hypocrite, but it just doesn't sit right with me with our local football club being owned by the nation state and being used to further their interests abroad. Mm, it's, it's very interesting to hear that because I... I've talked about this with other fans before, you know, what, with Villa, fellow Villa fans. What what would what would you do if we were taken over by a nation state? And you know, I've sat here for a long time and just criticised Man City and now Newcastle, not their fans or anything, but just the fact that the footballing authorities have allowed nation states to take over football clubs. It it is it makes it uncompetitive because how mm. can anyone compete with a nation state? The morality isn't right. You know, it, it's just it's just not. Yeah, I, I'm, my issue with City, um, City and Newcastle are the fans who can't see it for what it is. The ones yes. who can, I've got no issue with them at all. It's just, exactly. you know what? Yeah, we've had a lot of money pumped in. It probably isn't right, but, you know, I can't change it. I just go to the game, you know, with my dad or with my son, whatever. No problem. It's the ones who try and justify it, who try and apologise for it. And, you know, City putting banners up with the bloody lawyer's name. I know, yeah. And, yes, I mean, come on. It's just grim. I hmm. they and also like those two clubs, yeah, they could argue they needed it. City might be in League Two now for all we know if they hadn't had that investment. I think the last game before they got taken over, they got pumped seven 0 by Middlesbrough. Yeah. Um and then <laughs> Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. Was it eight 0 Oh yeah, god, I've done a <laughs> done a side one there, haven't I? Yeah, eight 0 wow. Um and then Newcastle came off the stre- off the back of Mike Ashley and yeah, you know, all the all the horrors that he brought to that club. And I understand that their fans are like happy that they've got someone who's investing. I totally get it. But you've got to just look at it and see it for what it is. And yeah. that is to further a country's interest abroad. Yes. Look at their away kit. How can you yeah. tell me that it's not the Saudi team? It's basically the Saudi national team now. It's hard. And and we shouldn't be putting this fans, Newcastle fans shouldn't be put in this position. City fans shouldn't be put yes. in this position. And we That's shouldn't. Point. Yeah. Football has grown so big that it's eating itself. And yeah. the people who actually make it what it is, us, got no say in it. I mean, loads of times I thought about, do you know what, shall I just sack it off and go and watch non-league? Mm. I don't know if you've ever felt, felt like that, but I just think, God, that's refreshing to think I can just go down to, <laughs> you know, the runners match, pay 15 quid on the door, or whatever it is these days, get a pint and not have to worry about any of this stuff. Mm. I'd, I'd be tempted to do that, but uh, the nearest non-league team to where I grew up was Solly or Moors, and I think there's a lot of Birmingham City fans might go down there. So I don't know if I can bring myself to stand around them, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'd... I'd um, I, I like Solly and Moors, by the way, if anybody... Uh, did you, did you used to play for them? No, I didn't play for them. No, I uh, I was in the youth team of Rushall Olympic, who were kind oh, of at the it. time... Rushall Olympic, yeah. Sim- they were similar standards to Solly and Moors at the time, but uh, I think I was... Uh, yeah, um, not not Rushall Olympic's best ever youth player, I'll put it like that. <laughs> Is that the first time you've ever revealed that you played for Rushall Olympic on a podcast? Do you know, I actually mentioned it the other day, Bizarre. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, I think George... Brought, said something about it and I was like, oh yeah, I want to play for Rushall back in 2002. So if anybody was uh, knows that club or played with them, uh, let me know. Uh, <laughs> good to hear from you. Uh, you'll remember my uh, one goal against Oldbury United. So <laughs> this, is, this is why you're so adept at doing the reviews because you played the game. Yeah. Played the game. So, such a prolific attacking force that I was. Uh, <laughs> one goal. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's fascinating to hear that because we're, you know, ultimately, you know, you're a United fan, Villa fan, but we're all, you know, we're, we're all got facing this kind of, ultimately, the, the, the nation state ownership in football. And it's just an interesting thing to talk about. And somebody I always recommend to read on it is Miguel Delaney, the independent journalist. He's always covered it really, really well. Um, I have a lot of Gosh. time for him and what he, he and what he yeah. endures as well. He gets a lot. Well, of- I was going to say, City fans don't have a lot of time for him. Let me tell you. <laughs> if um, you look at the comments to anything he posts on Twitter, it's, it's full of abuse. Pretty, and that's that kind of goes back to what I was saying before. The people who are pulling the wool over their eyes and don't like things being pointed out, you'd all just accept it for what it is. We all get on a bit better. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but uh, you know, look, uh, the game on Sunday. Aston Villa, Manchester United, Old Trafford, Theatre of Dreams. What's your score prediction? I'm going to say ooh, 3-1 United. Uh, payback for the 3-1 earlier this season. Uh, 27 years of hurt were ended. Um, but was it 3-1? I've it was 3-1, yeah. I've, I've done a men in black and just got rid of it. I can't remember. <laughs> well, but bizarrely, um, the, I went to the Manchester United... 3-1, never win anything with kids match in 1995. And then I went to the same, I went to the game this season as well. So that I was oh, at no. both I, of them I, games. 
I saw the tweets. I was like, look how giddy he is. <laughs> look how giddy he is. Bless him. What a loser. <laughs> He's been waiting 27 years for this. Um, yeah, uh, I... I do, I do wonder if you know your home form is is fantastic, and I, I do wonder if we, our squad might just hit the end of the road a bit against a team of United's mm. quality, um, just with our squad size. I'm not ruling out that Unai Emery can work something out, cause you a lot of problems, but I think you may just may just do it. I think um, I think Villa will score. Yeah, but I think two one is a is how I think it might go. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, Villa's we'll defense, see. right? And uh, are you going to be there yourself, Ian? I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Um, I've not gone to as many games as I would usually this year because we had a baby this year. So um, yeah, I've done most of the home games, but I've not done too many away games this year. Uh, but that's that's worked out well because we've been crap away and we've been good at home. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, your baby named Eric Cantona, Alex Ferguson, Barber. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, look, Ian, there may be a lot of United fans who, who watch this and uh, or listen to it and uh, interested to know where they, where they can find you online. So uh, if you don't mind, where, where are you? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, Ian Barber 88 is my Twitter handle. I've lost my plea tick, though. So that's that. <clears throat> that's not gone forever. Right. Cheers, Elon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. I'm glad. I actually want to get rid of it because anytime I ever get into any sort of spat with anyone, I just get the Conor McGregor meme saying, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right. Okay. Like, fair enough. Yeah, who am I? Yeah. Work, work paid for it for me. I didn't even want it in the first place. So. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you, you've been, that has been kicked away for you now. So, Ian, anyway, it was great <laughs> to have you on and uh, thank you for joining All Villa No Villa. No worries. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers.